Hey everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have a book haul for you. These are all the books that I've accumulated in the past three months or so. So we're calling it my spring book haul. So the last three months I've gotten my books um, a variety of ways. I'm a big thrifter, so there are some books here from a thrift store. Um, also, I have some book of the month books. I didn't go too crazy, luckily. I was able to restrain myself <laughs> and I only got one book per month um, for book of the month. However, June is another story. I got three books in my June box, but that's for the next book haul. <laughs> and also back in March, I had a birthday and for my birthday, we actually went to the last bookstore in Los Angeles, which is a really cool, both like gently used bookstore and also they have some new stuff there too, but it's a very actually kind of famous bookstore. So we went down to Los Angeles that day for my birthday and I bought some books there too. So that's kind of where everything came from this time around. Oh, and for my birthday also I had a Barnes and Noble card um, gifted to me by someone, <laughs> can't remember now who, and I did buy some Barnes and Noble books as well. I have separated this book haul into genre. So I am going through my fantasy stack first because it is the biggest stack, like always. Is anyone surprised? No, not me, not you, not anyone. So the first fantasy novel that I picked up is The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in Mistborn Era 2, the trilogy, and I did read Mistborn Era 1 and had not continued on just yet and partly because I didn't own this before. So now I have the first book. I really do want to get into this. I believe this takes place about 300 years after the first Mistborn trilogy it does and from what I understand it uses a similar magic system however it's following like all new characters and also has a bit of like a western flavor to it which is very intriguing to me. I know my friend Michael Nip um, really liked this um, era too very much so I'm excited to try this out sometime. The next books I'm actually going to talk about all together <laughs> because they are all from the same series and so when I am in a used bookstore I usually try to pick up any Wheel of Time books that I don't have because I would like to read the whole series and I'm hopefully gonna reread The Eye of the World this month if I am able to get around to it and then continue on with the series. It's something I've been meaning to do. So I did pick up books six through nine. <laughs> I have six, seven, eight, and nine, which this might be the part of the series that people refer to as the slog. <laughs> I've heard that term thrown around with the Wheel of Time a little bit. So this is um, kind of the middle of the series and so we have Lord of Chaos and personally I love old kind of like campy cheesy fantasy covers so I actually love the old paperbacks because I'm all about that aesthetic. <laughs> so they're you know a little bit a little bit dirty a little bit beat up but in fairly good condition. I got these all used. So I have Lord of Chaos. Book number seven is A Crown of Swords. Number eight is The Path of Daggers. And then number nine is Winter's Heart, which it looks like we finally have a female on the cover of this one. Um, all the others have like, like a beefy male <laughs> looking character who's like really ripped. And then we get um, a, fem a female character finally on that cover. <laughs> so my Wheel of Time collection is continuing and I will hopefully actually get around to reading these very soon. Another series that I would like to pick up someday is the Witcher series. So I did pick up the, I think this is the first book. I was slightly confused on which one is actually the first book in the series, but I got The Last Witch, which I think is a good starting place. But if you know more about the Witcher series, definitely let me know. But this, I've actually um, watched the first season of The Witcher on Netflix and really did enjoy it. Um, I think, I have a feeling the books are gonna be better or like I hope they're better because I did have some issues with like the pacing and just the way the story was told in the Netflix show. So I am looking forward to this. I have not played the video game, but in the meantime, I did really enjoy the show for the most part and I would, would like to 
get into the series. I have a couple more fantasy books here. Um, I have Sunshine by Robin McKinley. Now this was a thrift store find and I know nothing about it. Um, but I have read Robin McKinley before and I've kind of lately been on a quest to find her books again. I read her a lot when I was a young adult and this book was published in 2003. I have not read this one or seen it or heard about it, um, but it looks like it's about vampires. And if it was written in 2003, then that means it was written like at the height of when vampires were a super popular thing. And I was definitely a part of that um, love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. At the time, I also loved Twilight as well. Read all those books, had a great time with them. So this, to me, I'm hoping gives me the same like throwback feelings, the throwback vibes of the early 2000s when vampires were all the rage. And I remember really liking Robin McKinley's writing in general. So uh, yeah, I would really like to reread some of the ones that I used to own but I've gotten rid of and that was a stupid idea and now whenever I see a Robin McKinley book in a thrift store I'm gonna pick it up. This is my last fantasy book to show you here. This is a book of the month pick. It is from last month actually I think from May and this is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint and this might be a debut novel but don't quote me on that. But this follows the legend of Ariadne and there's also the Minotaur in here so there is um, a Greek mythology retelling happening in this novel. And I believe the Minotaur is actually her brother and she lets in Theseus into their, um, their city. And I guess he maybe kills her brother, kills the Minotaur, and then she has to like deal with the consequences. I think she actually helps Theseus to get like access to the Minotaur so that he can kill him. So um, yeah, I don't really know a lot about this particular character in Greek mythology. So I need to do a little more research on that as well before I get into this so that I have a bit of a backstory. So I don't know if this is like a retelling or if it's kind of doing its own plot line, but it looked good, sounded good. I like Greek mythology, so we'll see. I also picked up some classics because who would I be? without classics. So I got first Persuasion by Jane Austen. And this I would like to read this year. I am in a Jane Austen book club group of a few ladies. And so if you want to join us, let me know. We're reading Mansfield Park this month. And then we'll get to Persuasion eventually. I think this is maybe a later one of hers. So I think we have this one coming up a little bit later this year. But if you want to buddy read this with us, let us know. We'll add you to our Instagram group. And we also have live shows on Mary Jo Hedrick's channel every time we read a Jane Austen. I think my friend Rainy over at Rainy Day Reads said that Persuasion is one of her favorite Jane Austens. And so I'm really excited. I've heard that from a few people now, actually. Persuasion seems to be a very popular one. So excited about this. I don't know a lot about the plot, but from the little blurb on the back, it looks like we follow Anne Elliot and then her kind of love interest is Frederick Wentworth and they were once happily engaged and then something separates them and then they don't see each other for a long time and then I think they do see each other like many years later and they like still have feelings for each other or something. So um, it sounds actually really sweet. So yeah, excited for Persuasion and to see if I like this one as much as some of my booktube friends like it. Next up, I picked up a James Joyce. This is a portrait of the artist as a young man. I have been meaning to get back into James Joyce. I have read The Dubliners by him and I just feel like I need to reread that one because I think I liked it, but I didn't have a lot of background into like Ireland or Irish history. And so I think that's something you need when you read James Joyce. So I do want to go back to him and pick this one up too. And from what I understand, this is a bit of a semi-autobiographical fiction of his own life and experiences growing up as a youth in Ireland. Oh, so he would have been growing up in Ireland in like the late 1800s and early 1900s. Gotta check out more James Joyce. Next up in my classics pile, I got some poetry. I got some Alfred Lord, Lord Tennyson poetry. And I don't know if this is like the complete works, 
of him or if it's just some works. Because it says the works of, but it doesn't, doesn't say the complete works of. So I'm a little uncertain if this is like a complete edition or not. But it definitely goes through like different um, poetry collections that he wrote. And so if you don't know about Af Alfred Lord Tennyson, he was a Victorian poet. And so this, I think, would be really great to pick up maybe in October when Victober rolls around again. Maybe I can squeeze this into my TBR and get some poetry in there. And the last classic I have to show you is my really gorgeous copy. I love this copy of Les Mis and I got this. Um, luckily it was the last copy that they had and I snatched it up. <laughs> I was very lucky that it was still there. So um, this copy in particular is like nice and leather bound. It's very like feels good to hold. I like to just like hold it and squeeze it. <laughs> but if you haven't heard, I am hosting, co-hosting a read along with Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelves and Christy from Christy Lewis Dostoevsky in Space and also with Melanie from The Frenchie Reader. So we are going to be doing a read along of this. We're gonna read about 100 pages a week together and we are inviting all of you to do it with us. There's gonna be some live shows on Naomi's channel. So I will actually link my announcement video for that if you want to jump in with us and you wanna check that out. But we're gonna start this in July and I'm really excited to read Les Mis. I actually haven't read any Victor Hugo before. Well, that's kind of a lie because I actually read an abridged version of Les Mis back in high school and I didn't know that it was abridged but I thought that I read Les Mis, but it was only like 400 pages. So I definitely did not read Les Mis, not really. But I was really happy to find this really nice copy at the last bookstore in Los Angeles. It was a good find. All right, changing genres here. I have one nonfiction book in my pile and that is Lincoln on the Verge by Ted Widmer. And then the subtitle there is 13 Days to Washington. And what this is about is about his travel to Washington when he's about to be inaugurated and the things that were going on while he was traveling. And they actually, from what I understand, um, I think tried to assassinate him before he was inaugurated. So I know there were a lot of people in this time that did not want Lincoln to be president and it was just a turbulent time in American history. So while this isn't like a full biography of Lincoln, it is following an interesting like event of his life. So I do actually still need to find a good Lincoln biography. Let me know if you have like a favorite one or like what's the staple Abraham Lincoln biography that you think I should read. But this, I would like to um, supplement that as well and check this out. This is actually a newer release too. This was only published in 2020. I also have one graphic novel. I'm not a huge graphic novel reader, but I did start Fruits Basket a long time ago and just never finished the series. I actually should probably backtrack a little bit, but I did finally pick up the 12th volume. Um, and I can't remember if I read 11 or if I just own 11. I know I read it up to 10 at least, but I don't know if I've read volume 11. So this is volume 12. It's the final volume in like the collector's edition, which these editions are really nice. They're just really like well crafted and they're so like clean looking with all like the white and their cute colors. Um, they actually sit, they all sit down here. Um, you can't see it in the shot, so I don't know why I'm pointing to it. But now I can finally get through to the end of Fruits Basket. I was actually hoping to do that this month if I can. Um, we'll see if that happens. This is more of a shoujo manga. It's more about like the relationships and the character relationships. It's very like teenager centered, kind of YA genre. So it's like contemporary with a little bit of fantasy thrown in there too, but I would say it's like mostly contemporary. The next genre is actually a genre that I never read from, but I would like to. So I picked up a few kind of like lighthearted cozy mysteries and this first one is actually more like a sci-fi mystery and I don't really know very much about it so if you've read this let me know I'd love to hear if this is worth my time but this is Dirk Gently's 
a, a holistic detective agency. I have a sticker like blocking the word, so I had to look at the side there. But this is by Douglas Adams, who is the same person who wrote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a book that I also own but haven't read. I would like to read some Douglas Adams. He seems like someone I would like. So this is more like a detective story sci-fi romp, like in his Douglas Adams kind of sci-fi style with a lot of humor and it sounds like fun. It gives me like Terry Pratchett vibes a little bit, although I don't know if that's accurate or not. But even, I'll just read the back to you because it's, it's, it sounds like fun. It's pretty funny. It says, what do a dead cat, an electric monk who believes the world is pink, quantum mechanics, and a chronologist over 200 years old, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and pizza have in common? <laughs> Apparently not much, until Dirk Gently, self-styled private investigator, sets out to prove the fundamental interconnectedness of all things by solving a mysterious murder, assisting a mysterious professor, unraveling a mysterious mystery, and eating lots of pizza. So this sounds very like lighthearted and fun. Um, I, it reminds me, I read a book that was sort of in this style too, like kind of a funny detective novel. But that one I ended up not liking as much. It was, um, oh, what was it called? It was like a dinosaur detective thing and it was kind of weird. It was, it was just kind of weird. It didn't end up working for me. So maybe this will work better for me. But uh, this just sounds like fun. Um, if you have read it or you know anything about like, I guess there's a Netflix series according to this sticker right here. Um, if you know anything about it, I would love to hear more and to um, to see if I want to prioritize this. So the next two are actually more in the cozy mystery genre, which is a genre I want to get into, but I never really knew where to start. And then I saw this at my used bookstore at Goodwill actually, and it was in such good condition and it says it's in the, fir like the first in a series, but that cozy mystery is The Plot is Murder by V.M. Burns. And uh, that cover just screams cozy mystery, obviously. We've got some cute dogs there. We've got a cozy bookstore and a nice cozy chair. We've got some food, of course. There's like always food on covers of cozy mysteries, pretty much. But this sounds charming. Um, if you've read this author, I would love to know if this is a good place to start with cozy mysteries. Um, I know there's more like well-known authors, I think, than this one, but this is about Samantha Washington, who has dreamed of owning her own mystery bookstore for as long as she can remember. And then what happens, I believe, is there is a murder that is then tied to her, and she is a suspect, of course, because she owns a mystery um, bookstore and she obviously knows a lot about murder because she likes murder mysteries so she somehow becomes a suspect in this murder and uh, yeah this will be maybe maybe my first cozy mystery if I get to this soon so um, it looks like fun I want to know if cozy mysteries are for me and then another more like modern cozy mystery that was written very recently and also is a book of the month pick, and that is Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. And this sounds like a lot of fun as well. This is about a young lady, Mia, no, you know, Lila, <laughs> Mia's the author, Lila, who um, is inheriting her family's restaurant, and what happens is I guess her ex-boyfriend gets murdered, and then she is a suspect of his murder as well and she has to kind of like help solve the crime and uh, clear her name so people don't think that she murdered her ex-boyfriend. Again, there's a dog, there's food, there's really no other way to get me to pick a book up quite that fast. As soon as I saw this one, I was like, yes, I need to read that. There's food and a dog on the cover. That screams Victoria. Okay, we're almost there. Getting into the contemporaries now. I occasionally like a fluffy contemporary, and so I have some kind of like summer beach reads that I picked up. The first one of those is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, and I have read Morgan Matson before. I read her latest one, which was actually, no, it was like her second latest one about the wedding, and I think it was called Save the Date. Um, and so I did really enjoy her writing and I enjoyed the themes in that. And so we'll see if I end up liking this one, but it just looked sweet and fun. This is about 
two friends, Sloan and Emily, and I believe Sloan disappears one day and then leaves Emily like a to-do list of things that she sh- should do in the summer. And then um, I think there's a mystery as well of trying to figure out where Sloan went. But if that cover doesn't scream summertime, I don't know what does. We've got ice cream, just hanging out, enjoying the weather. Yes, this sounds cute. Next up, I have what I believe is a very popular rom-com kind of novel, and I have not read anything by this author yet, and that is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This, I believe, is an enemies to lovers trope, which is one of my favorite romance tropes when I do read romance. So um, this is about Olive and Ethan, and they are kind of like arch nemesis, (laughs) and they um, don't get along. But they are at a wedding, and I believe everybody at the wedding gets food poisoning except for them. And so what happens is Olive and Ethan go on the honeymoon that was originally intended for the bride and groom. And they kind of vow to pretend to be a couple so that they can go on this honeymoon package together. And I assume that they fall in love. I feel like romances, they they start with the spoiler. Like, you know... You know that they're going to get together, but it's like the journey that goes along with the novel that that's what, you know, why you read it. So I know that they will fall in love somehow, but they start as enemies first. The next book that I have to show you is People We Met on Vacation by Emily Henry. And I have actually read Emily Henry before. I've read Beach Read by her and really enjoyed it. It was honestly surprising how much I enjoyed it (laughs) and I like I would reread that book and I I don't usually reread romance novels and contemporary fluffy things um I just don't always feel like they have a lot of rereadability but I would totally reread Beach Read it was so good (laughs) and so um with this one I'm hoping for a similar experience since I have had good experience with this author before And so this book is kind of the same trope as the Unhoneymooners, actually, only um, it's about Alex and Poppy, and they are friends, or they were friends, and then they had a falling out, and so they've been, like, not talking to each other for a couple years, and then they decide to take a vacation together to try and, like, repair their friendship, which is a really intense way to try to, like, reinvigorate your friendship to like spend like a whole vacation with each other like that's really intense but I'm hoping for the same great writing that I um, came to know from Emily Henry and I'm expecting to fall in love with these characters like I did in Beach Read. The next two contemporaries are a little bit more on the serious side and they are more like literary fiction I believe and so this is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson and this book will either be good or bad, I'm not sure, (laughs) because I keep seeing it in a lot of different thrift stores, so I never know if that means I'm seeing it because um, people don't like it and they're getting rid of it, or it just, I don't know, maybe people just loved it and everybody read it. (laughs) Like, I never know why things are showing up in the thrift store so frequently, so this is one of those that I'm kind of like, this could go either way. But the premise is very interesting and grabbed me when I saw that there's maybe a little bit of like magical realism in here. Um, There's like a couple of kids who have a ability to like spontaneously combust like like that, like what's on the cover. And then there's like this lady who's taking care of them. Um, She wants to be their caretaker, but they are twins and they spontaneously combust when they get agitated (laughs) and I think this is a bit of like a family saga and about like the way that families interact and connect with each other I don't I don't really know I don't don't have a lot more information other than combustion (laughs) so this book really grabbed me with its weirdness I do like a weird read from time to time so this might be a good weird read we'll see and the last book on my list here is In a very different vein, this is definitely going to be a hard read and a serious read, and this is not something I pick up a lot. But Murphy Napier rated this five stars, so I was like, if Murphy likes it, I might like this one too. Um, But this is My Dark Vanessa by Elizabeth Russell, or no, Kate Elizabeth Russell. Um, And so this one is some very serious um, subject matter. So this is about a young girl 
who um, is in a relationship in the 2000s with her 42-year-old English teacher. And um, then later we follow her when she's grown up a bit and there is um, a trial, I believe, and involving this man who was grooming her. And from what I've heard is you're in Vanessa's head a lot and so you're, you're getting to see um, the ways in which she still feels connected to this man and kind of like what this abuse did to her and what this abuse, like how this abuse affected her. And I know that a lot of people have really um, praised this book. Um, I have heard that this is a really good read. So I saw it, it was cheap in my Goodwill and it was a nice hardcover edition. So I hope to give this a try sometime. And those are all the books that I accumulated in the spring. And so if you have read any of these, um, let me know your, any of your thoughts. And also if you want to buddy read any of these, let me know because I will definitely um, put them aside for a buddy read with you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Check out my social media links in the description if you want to follow me in any other places. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed to this channel already. Let me know in the comments what books you've picked up lately. And until my next video, keep reading great books and see you next time. Bye-bye.